In Zechariah 14, 16, we read about the new millennium. And it says, And it shall come to pass that every one that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from ear to ear to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. And in verse 17 it says, And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. So it's very clear that in the new millennium, the Feast of Tabernacles will be primary of extreme importance. And therefore, the Lord has been leading me to study and see the Feast of Tabernacles. In 2022 and 2023, the Lord gave me two messages, which I could not understand at the time. Let me read them to you. The first message I received on October 9th of 2022 at 4.19 p.m. Not by bread alone shall men live, but by every word which proceeds from the mouth of God. For man was created first, then the woman. Listen to these words, son, for deception is spread rampant, and men's hearts are failing. Hearken to my words, and take refuge in them. I am. Voyagers across the sea came to rest, a land of many waters, a land of unrest. Sons and daughters, pilgrims, a man of dark resemblance, a counterfeit, Dutch in parentheses, vision of O. Mr. P, the king of the north, a meeting to occur soon, Mr. B, an imposter, vision of a horse changing color, black, gray, and white. Fear not, son, political unrest is at hand. The war will start in Crimea, Turkey next. The bear, the white horse. Go rest and eat. Come back later, son, for more. Wisdom in parenthesis. I love you, Abba. The second message I received on February 14 of 2023 at 9.09 p.m. The message says, Write, son, that I come at an hour, in parenthesis, when no one expects. The time is not given, son. Fire is at the door and war. For destruction is commanded. Fear not, son, the hour comes. The time is now. When the Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, shall descend in the clouds, for all to see. Fear not, son. The time is appointed according to my will. Son, I love you. You have done well. Depart in peace, for your arrival is near. And all is prepared. Now listen, in parenthesis, to my voice. Lemons and honey and, in parenthesis, nothing, the fig tree. It's late, son. Retire, son. I love you, son. Love, Lord Jesus, Yeshua. Amen. I, of course, had no idea what much of this message, messages really meant. And especially the part which talks about lemons. For there are no lemons mentioned in the Bible. So I had forgotten about this message and always wonder what the Lord had meant with lemons. That until two days ago, when I was led to watch a video, which against my will, I persevere through the first part of it, until the speaker mentioned the book of Josephus. And he read from the book of Josephus, chapter 10 of book 3, in paragraph 4. Upon the 15th day of the same month, when the season of the year is changing for winter, and he was speaking about the fact that in scripture only winter and summer are mentioned as scripture. 
The law enjoins us to erect tabernacles in every one of our houses as if to preserve ourselves from the cold of that time of the year, as also to commemorate when we arrived at our own country and come to that city which we would have then for our metropolis because the temple therein to be built and keep a festival for eight days and offer burnt offerings and sacrifice thank offerings that we should then carry in our hands branch of myrtle and of willow and a bow of palm tree with the addition of the palm citron. Once I saw that, it blew my mind. The palm citron is lemons, and it's talking about the Feast of Tabernacles. It was an incredible piece of wisdom which unlocked everything else, which I'm about to explain to you, which has to do with the event of the eclipse scheduled to be on April 8th of 2024. On February 14th of this year, the Holy Spirit led me to fast and to anoint myself for the first time. And I was understanding that something major was happening in the spirit. I shared that with some of my brothers and sisters. I did not remember, of course, that the message I received was exactly on February 14th of the year prior. And this is the message of the lemons. The message of the lemons, I now understand, had to do with tabernacles. But the previous message I read from 2022 came on 10-9 of 2022, which is the first day of tabernacles. And in that message, I was told about a man of dark resemblance, Mr. O, war, and three horses, or rather, one horse changing color into a black, white, and pale, which as you have seen perhaps in my other series, Great is the Tribulation, is an image I became familiar with. So we have these political characters, war, horse changing colors, and the Feast of Tabernacles. You know, if you've been with this ministry long enough, you should be familiar with the one main number we have been shown over and over and over. And the number is 84. 84 is also 48. And 48 obviously has to do with the birth of Israel on May 14, 1948. Adding 84 years to that will take us to 2032. 8 times 4 also is 32. I won't go into the details of the calculation of the 84 years. I invite you to join my Zoom groups. Those are services I hold on Saturdays and Sundays where I go in depth into these teachings. But for the time being, once you understand 84 years from 1948, getting us to 2032, we now understand the significance of anything that points to 84 or 48. Now the three men I have been shown by the Lord to pay attention to as main characters of the upcoming tribulations are Arari, which is born on 224. 24 times 2 is 48, and he will be 48 on 224 of 2024. The second one is Mr. Obama. He's born on 84. This year, he will turn 63. 63 or three sixes. And the third one is Mark Zuckerberg. He has the same exact birthday as Israel on May 14. Israel is May 14, 1948. Zuckerberg is May 14, 1984. This is mind-blowing wisdom, not something I came up with. I was led to see this by the Holy Spirit. And in that particular way, we're led to see that in this particular year, which is 2, 24, or 48, we have three dates which we will be looking for and pay attention to. 224, May 14, 514, as well as 84 of 2024. Now, in the midst of all this, we happen to have 48, which is April 8, 
the date for the eclipse. But the eclipse points to the darkness, the darkening of the light. This is a match or a mirror to 8-4, a man of dark resemblance, ushering us likely into a tribulation. What we are pointed out to see is that the eclipse is a pointer to the presence of these three men, each one lining up with the three horses I was shown, the black, the white, and the pale, which at this moment are of equal importance. None of them is above anyone else. They're switching colors as in they're equally important until a point where perhaps one of them will emerge as a leader. What this eclipse is pointing to is a time of war, of unrest and political instability. It is very likely that we will see a major conflict appear around possibly the Feast of Tabernacles. There will be something else other major for us to expect. As I have explained in the wisdom received through other videos, we are to expect to see the first, the second, and the third beast rise. And at that point, once we've seen these three beasts come to being, now we know we will be close to the rapture of the bride. This message is to announce fire, darkness, and destruction not a time of prosperity and of transferring a wealth. This is not what the Lord is telling us to, to do. The Lord is inviting everyone and urging everyone to return to him. Like Mary Magdalene at the sepulcher, she turned twice back to the Lord, even though she did not recognize him the first time. We are invited to focus on the Lord and the Lord alone not to pick a date and sit on our porch and look out to the sky. That is not the watching that we're called on doing, but it's a watching of our hearts. It's a sifting through our own spirit. It's to ask the Holy Spirit to search us and expose anything that displeases the Lord, any form of sinfulness, worldliness, anything that's displeasing to the Lord to expose it and to help us to remove it. We are not here to be saved by our own works and righteousness. However, we're here to allow the Holy Spirit to work through us fruits worth of repentance, to be ready, a spotless, at peace and blameless bride for the Lord's return, which means we're called with the spirit of apostleship and grace to go out into the world and share the truth of the gospel, the redeeming power of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I hope this message was encouraging. I invite you to join my Zoom services where we spend more time going over these teachings. Time is short. Be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, our Lord and Savior. Amen.